All right, this problem starts out telling you the object's position in i hat j hat at t equals zero. I wrote that like this. And then it tells you the object's position in i hat j hat at t equals some other number. All right, and that looks like this. Your numbers are going to be different from mine, so you figure out what your numbers are to go in here. And it tells you the object's velocity at that same time t1. So I wrote that like this. And then it tells you that the acceleration of the object is constant, which has to mean that it's constant in both directions. So we have constant acceleration in the x and y directions. And so we can use these regular equations from kinematics. Now here's x naught and y naught, like you'd expect. Here, this is v naught in the x direction and v naught in the y direction. And this is the x acceleration and this is the y acceleration. And then these are the same equations from kinematics um, with the same variables for the velocity. So the first thing they ask you to find is the acceleration vector. So the acceleration vector is going to be constant, so it doesn't depend on time, but it's going to be the x acceleration times i hat plus the y acceleration times j hat. Now if we look at our equations and we think about x, for example, we have for x, we have x naught, we have x of t1, and we have v of t1, right? So for x, we have x naught, we have x1, right? And we have v1 for x. What we'd like to find is a for x. The problem is when we use our equations, we don't have an equation that doesn't have v naught in it. So we need to derive one. And I quickly did by combining these two equations. I don't have room to do that all here, but I came up with the acceleration was going to be equal to 2 times v1t minus x1 plus x naught all over t squared. And so by doing that, I can find the x acceleration component. And then I do the same thing using the y things. This y, this y, and this y thing, and I can find the y component of the acceleration. So I'll use all that to find a sub y. Remember, this one was a sub x. And I put that in for part a to get the acceleration vector. So that's the first part. Then we get to have more fun because now they're going to ask us for position velocity at some other time, which I'm going to call t number two. Now, to find the position, to find x2, I'm going to need this equation. So I'm going to use x naught plus v naught in the x direction t2 plus one half a in the x direction, which I now have, times t2 squared. But you can see that we're going to have to find v naught in the x direction in order to be able to do that. So I'm going to use this equation here to get v naught in the x direction because I have, I have v1. So v1 is going to have to be equal to v naught in the x direction plus a sub x t1. I have t1. That's this number here. There's t1. I have a sub x. That's the answer there. And I have v1. That's this thing here. So I can put that all together and get v naught in the x direction and stick that in here. Now that I have v naught in the x direction, I always had x naught here. I found a sub x from the first part. All I have to do is plug in the t's to get x2. And then I do the same thing to find with the, all of the y information to find the y2 um, with all that same stuff. So I'm going to have y0 plus v0 in the y direction, t2 plus 1 half a in the y direction, t2 squared. So I can find the y at t2, and that will give me the overall vector. So our vector of t2 is going to be 
x2 i hat plus y2 j hat. Then they also ask you for the velocity vector at t2. That's going to be easy now that we have all of this information because all we have to do is find, it's going to be v sub x i hat plus v sub y j hat. And all I have to do is plug t2 into these two equations with our a sub x that we have and our v naught that we worked on and then we'll be able to get those two components and finish that vector.